Strafing and aiming. So weapon drill number three for the BR does a great job teaching the concept of how strafe is pivotal to successful aiming. Aiming is a mix of the right stick and the left stick. You are not a static turret, you're not stuck in the ground who only aims with just that right stick. Now the right stick snaps to the target and makes small adjustments while your left stick's movement aids in maintaining that tracking on your opponent. So weapon drill three for the BR, watch what it looks like when you try and shoot the enemies without moving yourself, only using the right stick, try and track the enemy's movement. Now watch what happens when you implement your left stick or your straight, that movement into the engagement. It is so much easier. Now understand that this weapon drill sees the bots really only move one direction, but it's a great way to familiarize yourself with this concept. The same principles apply in a gunfight. As you and your opponent strafe, you're using both the left stick and the right stick in tandem to track during your shot strings. Weapon racks have some really cool properties to them. First, you can see above the weapon countdown timer for when the weapon rack will replenish. This cool little bar fills up. Additionally, if you are trying to quickly see where a weapon rack is near you, press down on your D-pad. Not only does this scan feature reveal the racks, but you can see weapons on the ground as long as it's within that radius. It's really useful when like a power weapon has dropped by a teammate or an enemy and you're trying to find it quickly. It highlights it, giving you a really big advantage while searching on some of the maps. These weapon racks are curated, meaning they're not random every game. There are a few variants per map. I've typically seen about two variants per each map so far. This means once you've played enough, you'll begin to recognize what rack variant you're playing on. Oh, it's the BR one there. Okay, I know what the weapon racks are gonna look like this game. Something like that, basically. So off the brick on live fire, you know, okay, it's either the BR or the commando rifle down there. And that will communicate to you right off the break what kind of weapon racks you're gonna be dealing with that match. As such, learn the popular variants and base your opening routes off of those. If you're a brand new player or even a veteran, do run through the Academy tutorial. It gives some easy achievements and does a good job introducing fresh players to the basic mechanics of the sandbox. On that same page, using the weapon drills to practice your aim, along with the new training mode, is an absolutely phenomenal way to warm up before some matches. And if you're new to the franchise, this is the best place to start. If we had like bot training modes back in Halo 2 and Halo 3 days, the amount of potential would have been like insane. We would have been so stoked to have that. Control the power weapons. The power weapons tend to have global announcer callouts and spawn on the weapon pads. They're usually highlighted in yellow, and they're pretty obvious on the 4v4 maps. These are weapons you want to consistently contest and control. A rocket launcher or energy sword, when used well, are massive advantages for your team. Typically, a Halo game's outcome is most heavily influenced by power weapon control and map control. Infinite is the easiest Halo ever to know when the power weapons will be returning, at least in those 4v4 modes. You have the announcer voice dialogue along with a timer on the pad itself. I can't stress this enough. Contest, contest, contest. That means setting up before it spawns and being ready to engage with opponents who are going for it or you pulling it before they can get to it. Power weapons absolutely impact the flow of a match and oftentimes the team that better controls them is the victor. Even if you don't score an elimination with like, let's say the rockets, those are rockets your opponents don't have. The same thing applies to the power-ups. Active camo and overshield are both awesome in infinite and active camo is downright amazing in certain objective modes. I find it so hard to see people with active camo. The default binding for switching grenade types is left on your D-pad or the N key on the keyboard. Frag grenades are really useful for anti-personnel situations, and they have a pretty normal or average blast radius. The plasma nades have a smaller radius but can stick to enemies, which guarantees a kill. And they're super useful against vehicles if you've got a good throwing arm. The dynamo grenades are basically the electric shock grenades. They rock, and they're super good area of effect denial, especially useful in choke points. And the spike nades are way more useful than they were back in Halo 3. These can stick to walls and the spikes ricochet off walls, quite useful in tight enclosed areas. And also if you can get a stick, it's an incredible feeling. Equipment is really useful in Halo Infinite. The repulsor can let you access map movement you normally couldn't. 
as well as the occasional boop that could push an enemy off a cliff or even roll a passing vehicle. The grapple shot is amazing. It gives you some of the most insane and fast movement tech ever in a Halo game. Great for escapes, engagements, drop it in on opponents who aren't aware of it. Utilize also the brand new ping system within Halo Infinite. When you press up on the D-pad or X on the keyboard, this will leave a mark for your teammates to see. If enemies are near your crosshairs when you press the ping button, the UI color will change and your teammates will immediately see where a threat is. Also, that ping shows up in the kill feed. This is incredibly useful, especially in ranked. I'm Diamond 2 right now, and I love when I run into solo and duo queue and have teammates who use this feature. I see almost nobody using it in social or BTB, mainly because I don't think people recognize that it's there. It's super useful for directing teammates to attention or key spots or maybe the objective or something like that. So if you're hopping into ranked, man, I highly recommend you start using the ping system. Teams that use it successfully a really cool communication tool. Now in big team battle, ordnance drops just happen. So listen to your AI for when they are dropping. It's usually like dropping from the heavens. These are almost always pretty good power weapons worthy of going after. They come down in those little UNSC pods. Right now, so few players are going for these when they drop. I think most folks don't even recognize that they're on the map. The longer a match goes, seems like the more often ordnance tends to drop. Also for BTB, the disruptor and the shock rifle can disable vehicles. Use this to your advantage. Not a lot of players know about this just yet. Also, if you are new to Halo, it's important to understand how the motion tracker works. After the first flight, 343 reverted it back to its traditional Halo style, meaning that when you move or shoot or sprint, you will appear on that radar. If you're not moving or if you're crouching or crouch walking, you won't appear on the radar. This is useful when you want to be sneaky in social matches for kind of a cheeky back smack. Again, if you're brand new to Halo, if you melee an enemy in the back, it's a one hit kill or a back smack. I highly recommend wearing headphones while playing. Hearing enemy footsteps is absolutely critical in ranked where there is no radar and sound plays a huge role in awareness. And even if you have a cheap pair of headphones, it can give you a significant advantage if used properly. I also like turning on the show enemy names option. It's a legacy setting that I prefer and can give you insights into the player you're dueling. I mean, oftentimes if you watch pro game play, they know the pros they're versing. You might hear them like one shot and then say the name of the pro player. And I don't know if it gives that much of an advantage, but it reminds me of the old days and, and you get a little bit larger um, icon above the enemy's head, basically. A lot of you asked about my color settings. You can and probably should change the outline color within the settings pretty easily. I prefer using pineapple for my opponents as it's super bright and easy to see. For my teammates, I like blue or purple, something that's easy to distinguish between the two of them. And again, just play with what you want, find out what works well here. A lot of cool accessibility features in Halo Infinite. Don't overlook the Magnum in those social game modes. If you're landing your shots, that thing absolutely shreds. So spend time in training, spend time in the weapon drills section so that you can be a little bit more confident online when you're fighting against opponents. One thing I don't think a lot of people are talking about with the new outline system, you're extremely visible. Every time you peek, you're a gigantic target that says, please aim at me. So keep that in mind. I feel like this game in terms of engagements is very aggressive. And anytime you show yourself to the enemies, it doesn't hurt to be uh, willing to reposition in order to get that surprise because these outlines make it so easy to see enemies cross map that it's sometimes worth in a losing situation to back off, recover your shields and rotate around to see if you can get a better engagement against the opponents. This is huge in the objective game modes. If you're new, of course, like CTF or oddball, it is so important to slay before you pull the flag. There's a longer respawn timer in these objective game modes. So if you slay successfully, take down two or three of the opponents, then it's a great time to go for the flag pull if you're close to it. But if you're pulling the flag before you've taken anybody out, you're really not gonna do your team any favors. It's slay and then pull the flag. Similarly with the objective game types like oddball, make sure that you're not just dying over and over again. It could really create a chain reaction when your team is struggling to maintain the control of that objective. If you guys want to know the recommended settings for Halo Infinite on both console and PC, click the video on screen. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying Infinite. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and we will see you again very soon. Gonna hit somebody with a hammer.
Surprise! 